Hey guys, I finally have the Motorola 12K2 chassis all back together. Last few things I did was to rewire the yoke. If you recall, it had some nasty spliced wires on that. I installed a pitcher tube, but this is not the one it came with. This is one that has a little bit better emissions. I'll show you where it came from in a moment. I had to put some new rubber mounts for the pitcher tube. It's just stripped down here. And there's some underneath this band up here. What I used was some rubber sheeting that I got off of eBay. The thick stuff at the bottom and the thinner stuff at the top. Cut a section out with the utility knife. And then use a little bit of rubber to metal cement to hold it in place. This is kind of like contact cement. And most importantly it's working fairly well. Not perfect, but pretty darn good. The major problem I still have to work out is that the vertical height is not quite even across. It seems to be a little bit what they call keystone. And there's some brightness variations. But it's not too noticeable when you actually watch some video content. I suspect both issues might be because this is not the original yoke, it was a replacement. Um, so I'll do some tweaking on that, but uh, it may just be that that's as good as it's going to get. Now as for the rest of the set. In an earlier video I had mentioned that I could not find the logo anywhere. What I normally do when I work on a set is I dedicate a drawer in this parts cabinet for the project and I put the model number on the drawer like here's 15DX, here's 12K2 and that's where I put all the various nuts, bolts and screws so I don't lose them. So that's the first place to look for the logo and I couldn't find it here so I was looking all over and just could not find it until finally I looked at the drawer right next to it and that's where I put it so at some point there was so much stuff in here I overflowed into this one and here's the logo. Now as for the screen bezel, this is the one that came with the set and I had been polishing it up and I was having a heck of a time. Some areas, especially on the outside, polished up without too much trouble but the inner surfaces were just not polishing at all. So I took some uh, lacquer thinner and wiped over it and I was surprised to see gold paint coming off on the rag. So upon closer inspection what I believe they did was they painted the inside of the brass bezel with the brass colored paint and they clear coated the outside of uh, and left the polished brass. I believe the idea was to cut down on the glare so the inside still looked like brass but it was kind of dull or satin brass and the outside was bright brass. But it was all kind of crappy looking so I have a few choices. One, I could strip it all down and polish up all the brass and clear coat it, but that'd be a heck of a lot of work. Two, I can try to reproduce what they did with some careful masking, but I'm afraid that if I mask off the outside and paint this, there's going to be a pretty clear demarcation. They probably use some kind of airbrush or something. I don't think my skills with a rattle can are good enough that I could just spray this and kind of feather it to the outside. So. I think I'm just going to paint the whole thing. Plus, I think that'll match the trim better. So, if you recall, I painted the trim, which is hiding down here. So, I took the same paint I used on the trim and painted the bezel. 
and I might go with that, but to be honest, I'm not crazy about the look, especially compared to the brass. So the second bezel I've got from a different set, I'm going to try painting that with this specialty metallic brass paint. This was gold paint, and this is brass. I think the brass will look better. And maybe I'll even go so far as to paint this trim with the brass paint as well. See how it looks. Well, it turns out that specialty metallic brass is identical to the gold. So, <laughs> I've got one last product to try, and that is aged brass. Let's see if that looks any different. Alright, that's more like it. This looks a lot more like brass than this gold does. So that's what I'm going to go with. I just sprayed the logo, and finally I'll do the trim. Now if you're wondering what the heck <laughs> these uh, bezels are sitting on top of, I'll flip it over and show you. What those bezels were resting on is a Motorola 12K1 which is the low-end sister set to the 12K2 that I'm currently restoring. So where did it come from? Well, I have a safe search on eBay for vintage Motorola TVs that I check periodically, and a few months ago I saw this set. It had an opening bid of all of $9.99, but it's all the way down in Tennessee. Oh well, it went through about three passes on eBay with no bids. And uh, I happened to mention on uh, Video Karma that I wouldn't mind getting it, even though it looked to be in kind of miserable shape, just for the spare parts. For example, the picture tube, and maybe some of the parts off the chassis, like the plate I'm missing for another Motorola set. Well, out of the blue, a uh, fellow vintage TV enthusiast that lives down in Tennessee said that he was going to be coming up to visit relatives in the Chicagoland area in July and he might be willing to pick up this TV and transport it for me if I help chip in on his gas money. Well, it just so happens that I had restored uh, another Motorola TV chassis for somebody who's down in Tennessee and I had no way of getting it back to him. He used to have relatives in Chicago that would come down periodically to Tennessee, but they ended up moving down there while I was still working on the set. So I had no means to get it down to him other than drive it myself or ship it, but I didn't want to ship it for risk of damage. So long story short, we worked out a deal. He brought this set up to me. He picked up the chassis and brought it back down to Tennessee. And we all chipped in for his gas money. And here it is. Now, I've gone back and forth on what to do with this set. It is in miserable shape. Not only is it old, but apparently it went through a tornado, and it seemed to have had a pretty rough life anyways. I've already taken the chassis out, and the, the bezel you've already seen, it's one of those that I just painted. Here's the chassis. So, as you can see, it's nasty. And it's got some goop hardened all over it. I don't know what this stuff is. And, uh, yeah, generally, <laughs> pretty grungy. Nothing's copper-plated, which I thought was curious. So, not only is it a lower-end cabinet, but even the chassis, uh, they cut corners like it wasn't copper-plated. And some of the components are a bit lower quality than the other chassis. This chassis right behind it here, this is the one uh, for the Bakelite cabinet that I'm working on. It was missing a side plate still is down there. So I'm thinking I can take the side plate off of this one and put it in there if I decide to part it out, which I am really leaning towards heavily now. It was This was sitting in my garage for a while while I decided what to do with it and I got to admit that even though it's a really simple cabinet, it has grown on me after doing all this intricate uh, dental molding and so on. <laughs> Just seeing these really flat, simple lines is kind of an interesting contrast. I also really dig this early Motorola logo, where it's just this stylized squiggle M. My grill cloth's in decent shape, but the cabinet is absolutely miserable. So, it's not just delaminated veneer. 
the plywood uh, base material is also completely separated and I'll flip this back over and show you how bad that really is so here's the bottom or what's left of it not only is a lot of the veneer separated but the underlying plywood has completely delaminated and half of the frame is gone this uh, got really chewed up it looks like maybe termites or something but there should be another piece of wood here and one here and one across the front and then it should have some kind of feet on it like this cabinet so it should have a, a box made out of some hardwood all around four sides and then feet well this is just so probably this much of the lower cabinet is just gone uh, there should also be an antenna down here just like in here you can see how there's one on the top there should be a mirror of that on the bottom all I've got are just the remains on the side so uh, that's why I, I think this is just gonna have to get scrapped to, uh, to rebuild this to restore it I would well I practically have to rebuild the entire cabinet both sides would have to go the whole bottom would have to rebuilt be rebuilt and it might be easier just to build a new cabinet from scratch and maybe that's what I'll end up doing I'll certainly hang on to the speaker the chassis the safety glass the antenna and so on and maybe someday um, somebody can use the chassis find another empty cabinet that I can put the chassis in or build them from scratch I don't know but I'm afraid this is just too far gone. I've got way too many other projects of more valuable sets. I just don't have the time or patience to deal with this. But I suppose I'll hang on to it for about another week or so. So if anybody watching this video wants it, all you gotta do is stop by and it's yours for free. Now as for this cabinet, uh, I put one more clear coat on top. I just wasn't quite happy with it, so I need to, to rub this down. Otherwise, it's pretty well ready to go. I rubbed out the front and the sides and it's looking really nice. So once I get the top done, I'll put that bezel I just painted in, the safety glass, put the speaker back in and put the set all back together for one last look at it.